Um, going forward, I would like to request uh, our brother Farid Khan to please come forward. He is a, a, a human rights activist um, and he is the founder of uh, Canadian uh, United Against Hate. So, Brother Farid Khan, thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, peace be upon you. Um, I would like to acknowledge that I'm speaking today from the unceded lands of the Anishinaabe Algonquin people of this uh, land, and we need to acknowledge that every time we speak publicly. This land that we, that we stand on is uh, land that was taken and where genocide was committed against the uh, people of this land, and we have to remember that and acknowledge that every time. Um, we're here and gathering at similar uh, events across the country because we're in pain, we're grieving. We want to show respect, we want to express condolence. We want to stand in solidarity with the Afzal family and their friends uh, and family uh, in London. Uh, we want to grieve with them and we want to remember them. Salman Afzal, 46, his wife Medea, 44, his daughter Yumna, 15, his mother Talat, 74, and the only surviving member of that family, his son Fayez, nine years old. And we're also gathered to speak for the dead because they can't speak for themselves and send a message to decision makers. Um, Chandra Ari, are you still here? Please take this message back to Parliament, not just to your government, but to Parliament as a whole. The politicians of this country have failed the Muslim community. Governments have failed the Muslim community. And they certainly failed the Abzal family. And the evidence of that is written in blood, not only on Sunday, but also last September, where a brother outside of Toronto Mosque was killed by a white supremacist, and in 2017, uh, 29, uh, 17 January, where six Muslims were gunned down in a mosque in Quebec City. Thoughts and prayers and sympathies are no longer enough. They were never enough. Speeches in Parliament and attending vigils are no longer enough. And we are tired of hearing, this is not our Canada. The truth is, this is our Canada. Our Canada is a country where racism exists, where violent racism exists. We've seen public displays of Islamophobia, violent Islamophobia hate and race, racism on the rise for years. Muslims, black people, indigenous people, Asian people being victimized and targeted. Muslims have been the targets of right-wing political rhetoric and media voices for years who didn't see Muslims as human beings. Sorry? Okay, sorry. Um, the conservatives in the Bloc Quebecois who stood up in parliament this week they talked about standing with the Muslim community, and yet they voted against the Islamophobia motion in 2017. And every one of the party leaders has said they are not going to intervene to challenge Quebec's racist, bigoted uh, Bill 21 law. When asked at a media conference earlier this week, the Prime Minister was asked, do you believe that Bill 21 contributes to Islamophobia in Quebec? He said no. Really, Justin? No? Well, I think you need to talk to the Muslims who've been victimized in Quebec, the sisters who've, had, uh, who've been assaulted. Where is the commitment? When you, can't, when you can't stand and call out Islamophobia in the second largest province in the country, how are we to believe you that you are committed to battling Islamophobia? My heart breaks for nine-year-old uh, Fayez will grow up without parents and his sister. The Afzal family are the latest victims of the political negligence to forcefully deal with Islamophobia, hate, and white supremacy. We live in a racist country with racist institutions where genocide was committed against indigenous people. We have to admit this and we have to move forward to tackle hate. We will not wait any longer for efforts to fight Islamophobia, hate, racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. If politicians don't listen or take decisive and concrete actions, there will be a political price to pay. Canadian Muslims will see justice done and change will happen, inshallah. Change will happen quickly. 
Change will happen more quickly if Canadians of all faiths and backgrounds rise up and make sure that politicians commit to action to fight Islamophobia and all forms of hate which have become a pandemic in Canada. We've seen how the governments rally to deal with the COVID-19 pandemic, while those governments now need to rally to deal with Islamophobia and other forms of hate in this country. Muslims need the help of non-Muslim allies and friends, neighbors, to make sure such a heinous crime does not happen to any community again. And now I'd like to make just a brief prayer. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. May God Almighty, the compassionate and merciful, bestow His graces on the Afzal family and give them a place among the righteous in heaven. May He give strength and courage to young Fayaz to cope with this tragedy and grow up to be the best example of his family. May He give strength to the Muslim community to rise above the hate that is directed our way. May He give us more allies to stand against hate, bigotry and racism in this country and give us strength and determination to cleanse this country of the forces of hate. May He give political leaders at every level of government the wisdom and moral strength to make the decisions needed to tackle hate across the nation. And may He allow all of us to live long enough to see the day when the scourge of hate is pushed back into the deepest, darkest recesses of society. Amen. Thank you.